We're going to begin by honoring mm. George H.W. Bush. Nation honoring our 41st president all week long, beginning this morning at the funeral home in Houston, where the president will be escorted, there you see it right there, by his family to Washington for the state funeral. And he will be transported by Air Force One. You see it landed, sent by President Trump last night to bring President Bush back to the Capitol one last time. The plane will depart just hours from now. The president will lie in state at the U.S. Capitol until Wednesday morning when a state funeral will be held there at the National Cathedral. President Bush will then be taken back to Houston for a funeral service at St. Martin's Episcopal Church on Thursday. After the service, a custom-made train named Bush 4141 will take the 41st president to his final resting place at the George H.W. Bush Presidential Library. Let's go to Amy Robach, who's starting us off at Ellington Air Force Base in Texas, where Air Force One will depart this morning. Good morning, Amy. Robin, good morning. George H.W. Bush was America's longest living president, and he led a virtually unparalleled life of service. He faced the end of his life with dignity, with courage, with grace, qualities he was known for throughout his 94 years. This morning, we're learning more about the last hours of George Herbert Walker Bush, the 41st president surrounded by family and close friends Friday, including his former Secretary of State, James Baker. He perked up. He opened his eyes. He looked at me. He said, hey, Bake, he said, where are we going? So he kept his spirit and he kept his sense of humor right till the very end. But his passing, George, was very gentle and very peaceful. Family friends say his last words were to his son, the 43rd president, George W. Bush, on a speakerphone, told his father he was a, quote, wonderful dad and that he loved him. The 94-year-old telling his son one final time, quote, I love you too. Amid the outpouring of condolences, words of praise from the current president. He was a very fine man. I met him on numerous occasions. He was just a high quality man who truly loved his family. One thing that came through loud and clear, he was very proud of his family. He's a terrific guy and he'll be missed. And several former commanders in chief, including his own son. I think he's going to go down as the greatest one term president ever. He was a good reminder that as fiercely as we may fight on policy and on issues, that ultimately were Americans first. I come before you and assume the presidency at a moment rich with promise. When George H.W. Bush became the 41st president in 1988, it capped a remarkable lifetime of service. We've been given a lot of material things and have been very blessed when you look around and compare life to others, that how lucky we've been. But you must feel responsibility to others. You must believe in serving others. That's a fundamental tenet of my life. He had been a Navy pilot, served as ambassador to China, director of the CIA, and vice president under Ronald Reagan. I, George Herbert Walker Bush, do solemnly swear. Then, as commander-in-chief, guiding the nation through the end of the Cold War and Operation Desert Storm. Kuwait is liberated. Iraq's army is defeated. Our military objectives are met. But perhaps his greatest legacy, his commitment to family. He married Barbara, his teenage sweetheart, in 1945. The couple had six children, future President George W. Bush, future Florida Governor Jeb, sons Marvin and Neil, daughter Dorothy, and a little girl named Robin, who died of leukemia at the age of three in 1953. But he was very close. I was very close to her. Um, she adored him. What was it that pulled you back up on your feet afterwards? He was very strong then. He was wonderful. After a national day of mourning and a state funeral Wednesday, 41 will be laid to rest at the George H.W. Bush Presidential Library in College Station Friday, alongside his young daughter and his late wife. If I do think that, that you go to heaven, there is heaven. I don't fear it, though. When I was a little guy, I'd fear death. I'd be I'd worried about it, I'd be scared. Not anymore. In addition to his children, President Bush leaves behind 17 grandchildren. Much of that family will be on board Air Force One today as President Bush makes his final trip back to Washington, D.C. Robin? Yeah, I'm going to talk to members of his family in just a moment, some of his grandchildren. But, Amy, uh, many of us saw that the photo of the late president's service dog, Sully, saying goodbye. I mean, that photo just captured yeah, our hearts. Right. He'd been with the president since June, oh. and he made a special provision for his beloved Labrador. 
At the late president's request, Sully, yes, will be heading back east. He will be rejoining America's Vet Dogs and Walter Reed Medical Center, where he will be assisting wounded veterans. And of course, yes, we saw that poignant and beautiful picture, 41 released, and also added this, saying, as much as our family is going to miss this dog, we are comforted to know he will bring the same joy to his new home, Walter Reed, that he brought back to 41. That, of course, coming from President Bush, a life of service continued, guys. The legacy continues. Amy, thank you. Just a picture of devotion <laughs> right there. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.